Um, right, and some that already know you, they'll be great to hear from you. Right, right. Coach Coffee Brown, tell the people who you are. Well, what's up? What's up, <laughs> Book of Faces? Facebook, Book of Faces, everybody. <laughs> I always call Facebook the Book of Faces. Okay. But, um, you know, I am P. Coffee Brown. I reside here in the great state of Texas in Houston, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. out here in these Texas streets. streets. I'm originally from Detroit. <laughs> okay. I reside in Florida, the Carolinas. I have been some of everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, Five brothers, no, two crew. sisters, only one brother who's 18 months my senior. Everybody else is younger than me. Okay. So we okay. got a huge, okay. huge crew. Um, I recently got certified as a life coach. I had been doing it forever, but mm -hmm. I wasn't certified. So I was like, let me go get mm -hmm. some paperwork. Bootlegging. You a bootlegging. Let me get some paperwork. Yes. Because you know, people ain't brand new if you don't have no papers. You know? so right. So let me go and get me some paperwork. You right. Know? So I went ahead and got certified as a life coach. Um, I have written for several people before, but I never started my own publishing. I had a terrible, terrible house oh. fire. I lost all of my money nine, and I just discouraged about writing, and I didn't even try to write anymore mm -hmm. and so you know God placed some angels in human form around me that just encouraged me it's like man listen you have a gift to write mm -hmm. my editor was like hey look I gave her a book that I wrote in 2012 and she started editing I was like nobody tell you to edit she's like you're gonna publish this I was like really right. so you know she really encouraged me my daughter actually did one of my book covers my youngest daughter is here with us today okay. Yasmin. she literally did my book cover oh awesome yeah she did my book cover for one of my books and then um i've been doing that for years i just never went full throttle with it so i said okay. you know what it's time for you to go ahead and use all the gifts god has given you yeah and stop sitting on your gifts so i started to do that i've been in education for a long time okay. i love the children's ministry Love the children. Mm -hmm. Love the children. <laughs> so I have projects with students that I'm working on right now. The okay. It's called Groom for Greatness. And I've always aspired to have my own school. So I've been working on that mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Just kind of getting a clear understanding of what it really looks like to actually have a school and what right. it all entails. Um, my former bishop, when I lived in Florida, he cool. yeah, I've always That's had this awesome. idea in my brain, and I was like, man, I gotta, I just gotta have a school, and so it's like the, it's like my plan and everything is written down. I just haven't, I literally have to follow the steps to get it to where it needs to be. But I have, man, that thing is written down. And I'm like, oh my mm. goodness, you know, it just, it's, it's intriguing, you know, when you yes. think about it. I'm like, yes. man. Yes. So, yes. you know, I'm in school full-time, also online. I got a 3.76 GPA, you know, All doing right the dang now. thing. You know, if you're going to do right. what you're going to do, you know, not nothing major. You know, not nothing major. These are the minors to the majors. Mm -hmm. You know, we get to the big leagues, you know what I mean? Wow. Now, I know <laughs> now, I, to some of you all, it may not mean a whole lot, but you are certified. I am. John I Maxwell. Am. I am. Uh -huh. And that's my goal for 2020. Wow, that's so what's up. I'm excited. Gotta I'm excited, excited about that, right? Certification is everything. Yes, really yes. Is. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see that. Um, um, and that's waving just at kind the of people. Waving me. at the people. Hey, y'all. So that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Well, I know that now when I see some of the things that you have going on uh, Facebook, I see you have some things coming up for 2020. Right. Why don't you kind of talk about some what some of those things are? Well, I started a show. Um, I had, man, I, <laughs> man, the show actually got birthed from a guy that I was dating. And we had a horrible misunderstanding like three years ago. Mm -hmm. And we never could get past it. And I was like, why can't we just communicate it? What is going on with the communication wow. ministries? Why can't we just get this <laughs> communication down right. and work through this stuff? And so nonetheless, um, I sought out 42 different guys. I interviewed 42 guys. And I ended up finding someone that I felt was comparable to what I was actually doing. And so I sought them out. Um, and I, I went ahead and worked with that person for a whole year, Charles Dixon. Uh, he's still one of my friends on social media. You guys can connect to him. But he has a, comp a show called Unique Perspective Love Talk Radio out of okay. Chicago. Okay. And so I used I followed him for a long time to kind of see the consistency. And all the guys that I interviewed were in some type of review, some stellar people, but they just were not a good fit mm -hmm. for my personality. I, I wasn't going to be able to roll with them on a continuous basis. So he mm -hmm. helped me to spearhead my show. And he was yes. like, look. At some point, you're going to have to fly this car by your, this plane by yourself. And I was like, I don't want to fly the plane by myself. 
So uh, we ended that at the end of last year for first season, and so I'm just going to fly solo and continue the show. But it's called The okay. Hot Seat. It's about relationships. Hmm. About relationships. Yeah, getting it you together. All out there, relationships. Getting it together. I thought, you know what? You'd be a good person to come back um, in February. I have a. Uh, my theme for th- February is going to be what's love got to do with it, and that's when my book comes out, my first anthology. It's so called you gotta the come Seven back in Seas. February. Yeah, the Seven yes. Seas of the, a Successful Courtship. Yes. Yeah. So it's yes. gonna be it's gonna be hot. I got some incredible authors on board with me. It's gonna be a great. It's okay. gonna be a great book. Yeah. Okay. So those of us that are in relationships and desire to be in relationships, mm-hmm. you're talking about communication, right? What's one of the biggest, some of the biggest issues you see? And that keeps individuals from connecting on that uh, communication level. I'm in school for communications and public speaking. Okay. And it's so ironic that you say that because now from that perspective, putting everything together and having to be forced to do candid research and things like that, one of the major things is simple misunderstandings. Mm-hmm. What I say, I don't apply. What I say, I don't mean. What I say, I intended to say this. And these type of misunderstandings, the nonverbal communication, what are the signs that the person is telling you without telling you anything, what's going on between the words. It's so many different facets of communicating that we miss in relationships because we're too busy trying to be with that person as opposed to being ourselves in the presence of the in person. The person. So, so, where, different. so where do you think that duplicity comes from in what we communicate, what we really mean mm-hmm. versus what we actually communicate to the other person? Well, it comes from our history lesson. Our life is nothing more than a history lesson. And based on what we used to do, we still do. As Mm -hmm. opposed to taking the initiative to change what we do now. So a lot of stuff, you know, comes from, okay, when I was with this one, this is how I did it. When I was with that one, that's how relationship, when we shouldn't be taking those from relationship to relationship because every individual human is different. Or you hear the concept of men think like this, women think like this. Yeah. To an extent because every human is totally different. Every man doesn't respond the same way. Every woman doesn't react exactly. the same way. Everybody doesn't read the same thing, the same information in this particular way. But we have a tendency to say, oh, men think like this. Oh, women. No, that's not true. Mm-hmm. It's individuals. And like because I'm in school for communication, I'm really enjoying the parts where our professors get engaged and they're like, that's not how everybody does it. That's not yes. how every human yeah. thinks. Yeah. And so we have a tendency to put people into this box based on our understanding, our interpretation, instead of adding value to them where they are and for what it is that they need from us in the scope of the relationship, not what we think. Right, right. If I'm with you, I need to be understanding you. So my mantra is always you have to earn your, you have to learn your mate to earn your mate. That's my mantra. If you don't learn me, you can't earn me. So don't get mad when somebody else did the work to get at me. So don't get upset with that. That, That's going to be on you because you have to literally learn them to earn them. That's all fair. It's like anything else. If you go to any position, you don't go in there, okay, you know what? I know what I'm doing. No, No. that's not how it works because every no, that's why you said a couple of things in there. You said, I know one thing, uh, I'm serial daters. Oh, yeah. I've dated a couple I used of to be serial a, I used daters. To be a serial dater. Okay. And so it almost, <laughs> right, it almost felt like I was on a time clock. You yeah. know, this happens, well, then this happens, and yeah. this happens. And, you know, it, for me, dating is, is great, but it can be exhausting it for is. me. It can be. Simply because of what you said. I be believe in becoming a student right. of the person that. I aspire to be with, right? Mm-hmm. So I become a student of this person. Right. I am studying them. I'm asking questions. Right. I'm looking to see if there's an agreement between Absolutely. how what they Absolutely. say and what they do. Right, right. All in the I'm guarding my heart, Absolutely. but I'm still studying them, mm-hmm. and that's exhausting. That's why it's I, you know it's hard to go for me mm-hmm. to go to this to this 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 relationship this relationship mm-hmm. this. You know, because again, I've spent, I've invested so much time Mm -hmm. in trying to get to know this person and understand them and study. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it, when when that's over, I need to like break down a little bit. I I got you. But dating has nothing to do with investments. Dating is all about the probability of having an opportunity to be with this person. Dating is nothing more than fact finding. I'm doing it's research. Fact finding. I'm identifying if you even qualify to right. be, if I even if there's even anything that you and I can collaborate 
in, if we can be content with being together. It's a number of things, and it's really not exhausting unless you're putting in too much energy in the dating phase. Dating, mm-hmm. dating is not work. It's fun. Well, for me, dating it's an investment fun. because yeah. I'm just trying to figure out, like mm-hmm. you said, mm-hmm. Okay, where is this person? Mm-hmm. What are they, you know, what is it? What is it that they really mean mm-hmm. um, when they say and when they do certain things? Mm-hmm. I kind of watch. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes if I feel it's important enough, I'll ask. Mm-hmm. Sometimes in dating, I find out, again, a lot of times that the issue is, is me. Mm-hmm. It's maybe my way of thinking mm-hmm. about a situation. Mm-hmm. And I'm open to if I am... In the, if I'm thinking about a situation in the wrong mm-hmm. way, I'm definitely open to mm-hmm. saying, you know, maybe I'm bringing my past into this, or maybe mm-hmm. I'm bringing my past relationship right. form of thought or right. pattern of thought that's right. not conducive to anybody, including myself. Right. You know, so it really is kind of a way that I kind of explore just me as well. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And so the whole thing with the um, um, with the with the dating is what I've really learned though. Uh, most importantly, is to guard my heart. Yeah, yeah. Your heart doesn't have anything to do with dating. Dating you know. is not, dating is mm-hmm. literally it's just an opportunity for you to kind of like meet people. Exactly. You know, get to hang out, do things, and without the forethought of okay, this might be my husband. Exactly. That's a failure. In, that's, that's a failure. Women. Yeah, exactly. that's something that we fail in. Because we're exactly. like, girl, I think I met my husband. You got to get to know Oh, my person. God, girl, girl, let me tell you about him. Girl, he, ooh, mm-hmm. girl. And, so, and it's like, no, ma'am, I'm going to need you to not go all the Back way. Back that up. Yeah, I like it's something it's you said, which is I don't hear people say this very often. Mm-hmm. But it's something that I say mm-hmm. when it comes to the whole. And it's, it's really not just dating in a romantic relationship. Um, is learn to wear people as a loose garment. And oh, I absolutely. don't say that oh, I don't I am. Let me because say. that means that I, I, I can't get too wrapped up in, in a, anybody. Anything. It doesn't matter yes. who they are, what the position is they hold in your in your life, anything, because here's the reality. It's interesting because I, I met a client and I, I she just needed me for one session. This lady had she's married for sixty four years and they've mm-hmm. never been apart from each other. So this was her first experience being apart from her husband. And she talked about the level of devastation he experienced from her just walking out the door without him. She was like, he just sat there on the couch and started booing because one of us will leave this earth. Yeah. It's this very low probability that we're going to die at the same time. Right. And so she was kind of mentally preparing him for weeks and weeks and weeks. But when it happened, he freaked out. He totally freaked out. She had accepted it. He freaked out. And so in our session, I was she was sharing. She said, man, I just got to get ready. I know he going to leave me. And she kept saying that. I know he going to leave me. And I said, see, this is what I love about where you are. Right. And I said, coaching is not counseling. I don't do I don't counsel people. I don't have anointments for that, honey. Because right. if I tell you if I tell you what I really know you need to be, <laughs> you're not gonna be thrilled with that. So let's just get in the, you know, let's just get in the game and work together. So I asked her, you know, what's your desired outcome from this? She said, I just wanna be able to help my husband to get to a place of peace. Mm-hmm. To understand that we cannot live forever. We've right. been married for sixty four years. Mm-hmm. And she was like, to be able to say I've been with one human for 64 years is absolutely incredible. But 64 years means that we're getting closer to death. Mm-hmm. We're getting much closer. Yeah. And she said, you know, my husband is over here like, oh, my God, I just can't. Oh, you left me. You, I can't believe you actually the next 24 hours because I need you to accept me not being there. Wow. And so I shared with her. That's I said, a wise Yeah. Moment. I oh. shared with her. I said, listen. The way you help your husband to get to acceptance is you start spending more time with you. Mm-hmm. Only way he's going to accept it is if you're not available. And not to be where you're not going to be accessible, but not available. Not available. So I said, if you start doing what you're doing right now, it'll be easier for him to deal with it when it shows up. Because mm-hmm. it's going to show up. That's two things that's going to happen. Death and taxes. Right. Those are two enemies that we can't get away can't from. Get away you can't from. get away from death. You can't get away from taxes. Right. You got to give Caesar what Caesar's do, and you got to give yes. the creator what the creator is do. Right. Everything else is hit or miss, you know. And I always say, even when I say lose garments, even in relationships, you could be with somebody for mm-hmm. ten or fifteen years, and they wake up one morning and say, "Hey, I don't want to be here no more." Mm-hmm. Okay, let me help you pack. Yeah. 
even though it's going to hurt like hell, but to just to come out of your mouth and say, okay, let me help you pack will help you to prepare for what you're getting ready to yeah. deal with. Because grief is not just from death. Grief is right. from everything. When you leave yes. the house, when yes. you leave the job, when the kids go to school, divorce, divorce um, when, you're, when you and your friend been friends for 22 years and all of a sudden y'all not friends no more. I mean, it's just Absolutely. grief happens. The five stages of grief happens in every facet in every of a loss. Right. Doesn't matter what the loss is. And so when you use the perspective of what the Bible says about where everything is a loose garment, you can cope with the reality that mm-hmm. everything is going to leave you. Yeah. Everything has to leave you. It yeah. doesn't matter what it is. It's funny because my son made a comment about our dog. He was like, I don't know what you're going to do when the dog dies. I said, well... You know, I started to cuss, but I didn't. I've been working on my cussing ministries. I've been, I don't even put myself in that, in the space to say I ain't going to do it no more because I'd be lying to me and Jesus, you know. So I said, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm going to try not to do the cussing ministry. So I, so I caught myself. I said, you know, I said, do you feel like I'm that attached to an a, a, a animal? He said, you have literally, you in love with the dog. And I said, I, I don't think I'm in love with the dog. I'm in life. I'm in life. But I'm not in love with the dog. I, I promise you, I'm in life. I said, but I wouldn't want him to be injured if he Absolutely. passes. I said, but, at, at, you know, when he gets ready to transition from this life to dog heaven or, or the other place where dog, I don't know where dogs go. I, when he gets ready to transition, I'm going to just have to accept it and, you know, put him in the replacement ministries. Just find another the replacement. Another one, you know? But, you know, that's just really, it just really is at the heart of why the Lord has to be the center of who we Absolutely. are because again Absolutely. everything else is temporary. It is. Everything, and it's that, everything, everything else perishes is with the using, even the body. Yes. Everything it does. perishes with the everything, using. Everything and is, we get so we get so yes. I think the reason why I got the way I got was when my house burned down to the ground in two thousand and nine. Mm-hmm. And once my home burnt to the ground and everything, mm-hmm. every tangible thing that I possessed mm-hmm. was physically gone. You talk about an eye opener. Yeah, that's the most one of the most painful experiences you can have, is to have a devastating fire. Mm-hmm. And I was like, everything mm-hmm. is gone. Everything. Wow. I'm talking about there was nothing salvageable. It was probably matter of fact. I take that back. I have one bowl. That's the princess. That princess. Um, princess house. Yeah, yeah. I have one punch bowl from Princess House that I was able to salvage. Mm. That, was that was everything else yeah. was gone. Everything it is. It's was gone. true. Everything is it's temporary. And so we we learn to appreciate right. it. We right. we, we but endeavor to be good to stewards it, of but it. But you can't be attached to it. Right. You can't be. You gotta be careful about attachments. And so mm-hmm. it's it's crazy because going through a challenging divorce and then him falling dead right afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like within a year he just fell dead. It's like what in the hell mm-hmm. that is going on? Mm-hmm. First the house, then the divorce, then he dies. I was like, this is wow. this is way too much. Just a lot. Yeah. But you know, well, what, what span of time was this? Us. It was back to back to back. Wow. Back wow. to back to back. And it was But like, look at you. Girl. It's just because but again, it's the power. Right, right. It's what pulls you out of the situation. It took me a long in. time to trust. God again mm-hmm. because I felt like you know and a lot of people can't be transparent about this yeah. kind of stuff but when you lose so much you're like why do I need to believe in you mm-hmm. because I don't even have what am I believing you for right and so as I when I moved I literally six months after he died I didn't tell anybody I was leaving I packed up all my stuff only one that knew was like one of my best friends and my godmother and you know all of the legal people lawyer for business stuff like that so mm-hmm. my legal team needed to know I was leaving the state because at that time I had a, my business was thriving at that time so okay. I could just walk up and say oh I'm out so sure. um I got with my legal team and everybody and I was like hey I, got, I gotta leave and it was ironic because I had been coming to Houston for years I had a coffee company with Organo Gold and my team was doing oh, okay. about 20 grand a month and it was like we were flowing and so all of a sudden, bam, the bomb gets dropped, you know, when their father passes away. Mm. And so I'm like, I can't, I can't do this no more. I got to literally, and six months before he died, I was at death's door. I had gotten mm. sick unto death, literally. And they kept saying they didn't know if I was going to live or not. So I was like, oh my, it was a lot going yeah. on. But I had to literally be, rebuild my faith. But Houston, this city was my saving grace. I had come out here every month after month on business trips, I, and, I, and I loved the city. And I literally went back home to Florida. And let me tell you what I did, Pat. You talk about 
with vision, everything that I could find that had Houston on it, it was on my walls, in my shower, <laughs> it was on my light switch, it was on my screensaver. It was in my in my office at work. They thought I had lost my mind. I had pictures of everything Houston all over the wall. No mm. joke. Plastered on the wall. And the, and my girlfriend was asking me, she said, what is going on with you? I said, I'm getting the hell out of here. And I got to go. go. And I said, this is where I'm going. And it was funny because the day when I said I was coming, I was riding to the airport from Houston. And I was at my financial lowest. This was before their father passed away. I was at my financial lowest to the point I had to ask somebody to give me money to get back to the airport, to get back to my family. Mm -hmm. I sat in that cab. I cried, cried all the way till I landed in Florida. I cried in the car. I just cried all the way through. And my friend that came to pick me up said, what is going on with you? I said, I can't be here no more. I just can't. And I was like, my, my whole countenance had switched. It has switched to here. And I said, in transit, back to where I was living at, I said, by this time next year, I will be living here no matter what it costs me. I did not know that their father was going to die. I didn't know what that statement meant. Right, right. But when I tell you it was literally a year to the date, almost in the same day I was here in Houston. Wow. A year later. Yeah. Starting all the way over. Then we got attacked again. Lost everything a second time. I was like, come on. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. When I got here, we met another enemy. Got all, had lost everything again. Went through the same mm-hmm. thing twice. But oh, I was God. like, I didn't come all the way out here for you to. <laughs> you know? And I was like, wow. really? But when I tell you it was life lessons, like, you can't go yeah. back now. You you right. already put it out there. So where you going back to? You going to deal with it or you not? Mm. So I had to gird up. You know, learn how yeah. to cope, learn how to rebuild. I volunteered in the school district for an entire year, full time. Gave my time. I just gave it. I just gave myself away because it wasn't nothing else I could do. Yeah, I was. I was at. I was at my wit's end. I was like, I can't do anything else. Oh, but what he was making in you. Yeah. yeah. You know, if we knew that, yeah. if we knew yeah. where we were going, if we really knew, yeah. we may know where we're going. Sometimes we think we know. We think we, yeah, know, we think we know, but the thing that really gets us, if, mm-hmm. if we knew how we would get there. Oh, no. We, we, nobody, <laughs> I, would, I would never volunteer We would never, for that. we would no, never, no we would say no. I, I, would, I, would, say I no. would have said no. Yeah. But you know what, what song I stood on was when, when Donnie McKirkland sung that song, when he said, will you trust me? Will you trust me if you lose everything? Mm. What if it costs my life? Will you trust me? What if it costs yeah. this? What if it costs Cost that? that? What if it costs this? What if it costs that? Will you trust me? And I was like, you know what? Yes, I, I trust you. Yeah. I trust you. Yeah. What if you have to lose the very thing you think you have to hold? Will yeah. you trust me? Yes, well, you, I, tr- exactly. I don't have a choice but to trust you. Right. So when I came out here, when I had my babies, you know, I, I made a commitment to myself. I wasn't getting in no relationship, no nothing. I had to literally figure out how to be reborn. I had literally died, and I had to be reborn. Yeah. So I couldn't be reborn with anything attached to me. Right. Only thing I needed was my children, and I asked God to have mercy. Don't let nothing happen to my children. And just keep my mind in mm-hmm. peace, because you talk about literally that will drive you insane. It will to go through all of that as one person, and it's interesting because one then of my then you move to a new yeah, place, a new st- and then my sister left. When I got here, she was reassigned somewhere else, and I'm like, that's everything I got. That's everybody. But you know what? I learned something about moving to a different state. I had studied Houston inward and outward. And the school district, when you have children, if you tie to those two, everything else will work itself out. Mm-hmm. And God just started giving me a whole new family. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I have literally created another family. I'm literally, yeah. it's like I never missed a beat. It's, it's, it's absolutely incredible. When God sent me to that school to volunteer for a year, he, put, he gave me a whole family. Mm-hmm. A whole family. Like, literally. And it's the craziest thing because even to this day when I look at how incredible God is, and he's like, just open yourself. You know, he who has friends must first show himself friendly. friendly. And you got to test people. You can't just have to trust them. Right. And, like, you know, now we watch each other. They was watching my children before they had children. Now they got children, and I'm watching their children. You know, it's a it's a relationship. Yeah. It's the law of reciprocity. What you sow, you will get it. You get a That's return right. on your investment, but you got to be able to put it out there. You got and to. everything you put out, you might not get a return from that source. People get discouraged by that, too. It doesn't mean it's coming back from that source. Right. He said, I will give you a return, but he didn't say where it was going to come from. Mm-hmm. And we get upset sometimes and twisted because the return on investment didn't, didn't come from the source we right. gave it out to. And right. that's irrelevant. That had nothing to do with the price of tea in China. All we have to do is just keep thinking and keep saying, okay, I put it out there. 
and God says, charge me in my word. My word cannot come back void. That's See, right. See, the stuff that we talk about, and it don't have nothing to do with the word. Mm-hmm. He said, my word won't come back void. Right. And the only thing I really promise you is that I never leave you or forsake you. I never told you that your marriage was going to work, right. that your dog wasn't going to die, <laughs> that you wasn't going to lose all your little money, that you wasn't going right. to do this. I never told you right. that. The only thing I told exactly. you is I never leave you, right. and I never, never forsake, forsake you, you, and I be with you always, even to the end of the ages. That's all he said. Mm-hmm. But he never said what the journey was going to translate. He never said nothing about it was going to be like this, that, that, that. He said, I know you're in right from your beginning. I have this for you and that for you, but I didn't tell you how you would get to it. How you would get to it. I didn't say that. That's not what I said. And I tell you, we would. We would turn around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We would say that. Oh, girl. We'd be like, if somebody told me. I got got to go through that. No. And we still still do not know (laughs) what lies ahead before we get that's to what right. we've really been assigned and created right. to do. You know, because I, I had a conversation with a guy one day. He says, um, he said, um, well, what you want to do for real? I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I said, um, you know, I'm a street preacher like that, right? I said, I, I believe I'm going to win millions of souls through the love of Christ, right? I mm-hmm. said, maybe even billions. Some of them not even born yet. He goes, huh? That's what you want to do? I said, why not? Why would I not want to do it? Right. I said, the love that God has shown me, I got to show somebody else. It's just, it's just how exactly. gracious and how merciful and how kind he's been to me. I said, literally, dude, you don't, I don't have to tell anybody anything. It's how you treat humans. Right. It's how you treat the person that won't benefit you, that dictates what's really going to happen mm-hmm. with you. It's like when I used to work for a company called Humana, they used to call me the mayor because I'd go in the bathroom, talk to the janitor. I'd go upstairs, highlight the president, come back down, <laughs> talk to the middle people. It didn't matter it didn't because matter. everybody was created equally. Exactly. If, if everybody bleeds red. Right. Everybody. It's blue when it's inside you, but when that oxygen hits, it's going to be red. red. So I never put people in this box to where, you know, you, you sit up here right. and everybody else sits down here. I, I, you know, I treat the homeless person the same thing as I do to the president of the Absolutely. United States. You know, I have friends in high offices in this nation, and I don't treat them any better than I treat the people that's sitting there on the corner right. trying to get $5. And I'm like, why do you need $5? But you know what? That's something that's really kind of at the heart of what I... It's kind of one of my pet peeves. Right, right, right. One of my pet peeves, right. Especially when it comes to those that say, that call themselves, you know, that they belong right. to the Lord. Right, right, right. But then they go places and they treat people in a way that is ungodly, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. unchristlike, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and they always say, well, you know, we have an issue in the church. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what, if some of the people in the church were start acting, a little more, the issue a little, little different. different. I think we, I I think think know, we put too really, much credence on that. Well, I mean, yeah. but I mean, it's not even about the. Um, it's not even about the. Of course, we know it's not about the right. building. Right, right, right. right, right we right, know right, it's not about right, the building. Right, one to one. Right. There's a scripture in the book of Acts that said Jesus went about doing good. Right. Right, right. Hand to hand, right. one to one. Right. When whoever I meet at the grocery store or whoever True. I meet any place, True. what am I showing? Mm-hmm. What am I reflecting to that individual? Mm-hmm. What kind of kindness am I showing them? I mean, sometimes we fail in that area. If we're having an adverse day or something has transpired, kind of throws off our energy, we do have a tendency mm-hmm. to not, you know, be that light in that particular moment. But it shouldn't be habitual. It shouldn't be it shouldn't habitual. shouldn't be ongoing exactly. to where you always got an issue or something's always arising where your attitude is not in check. And every time you turn around, you upset about something. It should be in check to where mm-hmm. you have the checks and balances. Checks you can get and yourself balances, together real quick. Right. Together. Right, right. And you got to have a conversation with yourself. I do all the time. Oh, all I day tell long. Myself, all day long. Girl, you need to get it together. Oh, I, I told you myself now, earlier like today. Now. I had an attitude. I said, I'm going to yeah. need you to check that ministry. Check you know, that. Yeah. Get, use, your, exactly. use your emotional intelligence ministry. And I need you uh-huh. to rewind. And then I answer answers. myself. You know, they tell you not yeah, to answer yeah. yourself. I think you should. I think you might. I think you might need to. I think you might need to. I do. I do. I answer myself. I'll be like, look, you know, you need to get and it really is. it's it your is. choice it is. it is you can live this way or you can live that Absolutely. way Which, how do you want to live Absolutely. what you going to do right right you're right and i have to have, look at choice. myself i have my right. uh, conversation right. with myself in the mirror and say what right. you going to do everything is a choice everything is everything is based on choices and and it's so funny cuz it's it's a lot of people who they they live by this idea that it's somebody else's fault Mm-hmm. Well, oh. if you hadn't did that, then I would no. That has nothing mm-hmm. to do. With, you respond mm-hmm. or react to mm-hmm. everything that happens in life. Yeah, All of it is a choice. Oh, so yeah. if you react versus respond, then that's the the problem that's is the you, issue. not not other humans. So please don't that's don't. Why I 
Don't do the blame game. And then they haven't realized it because they go from situation to situation right. to situation. Right. They haven't figured out that they're right. the common denominator. Right. It's like it's like people in all those situations. Right. <laughs> I have an aunt. I have an aunt. Perfect example. I have an aunt who is. She's married the third time now. And I remember when I was younger, I was like, why you got to have so many husbands? Oh, yeah. my God. Do you have a gift of husband me? I mean, I mean, what's up with the husband's ministry? I probably was like 13 when I asked her. And my aunt said something candidly to me that I will never, ever forget. She you said, were 13? I was 13. Because I, I didn't understand because I'm like, lady, you, you, I mean, you know, you, you and the husband ministry, how many husbands you don't have? I mean, seriously. And so my aunt said to me, she said, one thing that I do not accept is a cheater. And she had literally drawn through her energy two men that were cheaters. cheaters. She wasn't a cheater, but her daddy was a cheater, which is my grandfather. Mm. So she attracted her father's personality types in relationships because she literally idolizes my grandfather, right? Okay. He's deceased mm-hmm. now. But in I didn't want a cheater. Right. But in idolizing him, you attracted every every component of who he was. And that's taking responsibility. And when she said dissolve of the second marriage, she took some years to get herself, like you said earlier, to get herself in check. Mm -hmm. And so when she attracted her next mate, whom there it is. And my uncle, he is off the chain. The, the new uncle, you know, the other yeah, uncle, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, you know, the yeah. other uncle, you know. But this particular uncle, they've been together almost twenty five years, maybe now. Yeah. And so he's he's a gem, you know. He 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 is the kind of dude that traditionally every girl really wants the kind that does without asking yeah the concept she don't have to coerce him ask him they have a really good balance of power right and so that they have a literal equally yoked relationship in every capacity it's not in balance in this area or that area or this area or that area they have a great balance of power awesome so yeah they've been together 25 years Awesome. Yeah. And I tell you that is so that is really so key mm-hmm. is for us when we when we step back and we take a look at right. ourselves right. and just say, Hey, look, you know, and just be honest. Right. You know, it's it's, See, it's not the, the right worst there. thing that's in the, the world. Right there. Yeah, to People be honest have a fear with ourselves. and apprehension of their own truth. Yes. Because if you really, really dig deep to at the core of who you are, when yeah. you look at at the core, the foundation and all that's built on top of that all foundation, on top of you go, I don't think I really want to be that no more. Let me take that off. Let me take that brick off. I don't like that brick. Right. Don't go with the house anymore. Right. I don't want that anymore. That doesn't go. Ooh, that don't co- that coincide don't, at all yes. with who I'm going to be. That's and right. The one great thing about being a human is you can rewrite your script anytime. You sure can. I love that. That's, yes. the, great, that's the great thing about yes. being a human. You can literally rewrite no more. Right. I don't want to live here. I don't want yes. to have that. I don't want you to be my baby daddy no more. Yes. I just, you, you got to go. This has to go. And, yes. and just dictate and determine that I choose I to choose. be this Yes. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person. I call it like yes. planting seeds there you in the go. field. There you go. So if you, don't you never like know which one gonna germinate. That's right. But if you don't like the harvest you that you have today, up. pluck it right on up. Pluck it on up. Weed it on up. There you go. You know, and start the planting the, the weed. The key is the, the weeding. weeding. The weeding is the work. It's when the I work. go outside, and I'm gonna tell you, one time I did it. I said, Lord, this ain't my anointments. I don't want to do this. Let me hide. No. This ain't God's will for my life. I'm out there digging and digging and digging and digging, and the Holy Spirit said to me, "This is how you have to deal with you. Hmm. You got to keep digging and digging, digging and digging until digging. you get to the new you soil. Get to this new soil. You got to you got to yes. get that out. Absolutely. But then when you start to plant seeds right. that right. you want, right? Har- you, when you see that harvest, right. you have to plant the seeds. Right with those harvests. If I want an apple tree, I can't plant an orange seed. I right. have to plant an apple tree. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I have to plant that equates to the mm-hmm. harvest that and I'm And then you got to keep for. watering the seeds. And you got to water, you got to cultivate Hello. and take care of it. And you got to go out there and look. That's not, right. Not touch. Just look. Just look. Water, water look. Water, water look. Go out there and say, oh, you know what? It haven't come up yet. Let me dig and see right. what's going on underneath. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. That's not your business. Mm-hmm. That's God's business. Mm-hmm. Because what's God's going on, on what's Ain't going on underneath you. needs to go. Absolutely. But what's going on underneath is right. what's necessary for you to stand. Absolutely. You, Absolutely. you can't if you have shallow roots, right. Right. you won't be able to As stand. soon as that wind blows, it's gonna top over. It's gonna, it's gonna blow you right on the Man, I there. tell you this just so many truths. You guys again, this is Coach Coffee Brown. What's up? What's up? I 
I just and I just would love for you to connect with her if you have yeah, a coach or just you know uh, someone of that nature um, um, to be able to connect with to help you because a lot of times we do need someone that's going to be able to when we have things and aspirations sometimes right. we don't really know how to completely verbalize those things right, so right. we need that that midwife to kind of come in right. and be able right. to not tell you what your vision is right, right, right. but open your mind right. and your heart to the possibility Absolutely. of what really really when you have a person who has been through with as much as you've been through, mm -hmm. you had a vision mm -hmm. for what you wanted your life to be. Right. That's the type of person you want to connect with because, right. again, right. they can help you tap in where they tapped in, right? right? right. To be able the to help you get to that point. The key is where you've been. Because I tell people all the time, coaching is not counseling. It's not. A coach yeah. has had, they, the thing about coaching is not to knock anybody who's doing coaching. Whenever you are a coach, you have had to been in that game. Mm-hmm. I know tons of fastest, yeah. but all of them have played the game. Mm -hmm. So you can't be an effective coach if you haven't you been in the game. game. I'm you sorry. Gotta know. You, you got to be know. in the game. You got to be you, in the game. You got to. You know, like I had a conversation with someone who had gone through, you know, um, being abused like I was. Mm -hmm. And I said, girl, let me tell you how to get through that. Get through to you. Mm -hmm. So you, you inundated with, oh, my God, I can't believe he did this. Believe he did it. I'm going to need you not to be in denial anymore. Mm -hmm. It happened. It happened. It's nothing you can do about that event. Mm -hmm. But what you can do about the rest of it is what matters. Is what matters. I said, That's you know, good. I had an intimate conversation with my parents, and, and literally I confronted every giant from when I was a kid. I literally sat there and I said, hey, I don't like the fact that y'all made me keep a child I had from a rape. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that y'all forced me to do that. I don't like the fact that when I came to you and told you that your, your sibling took my virginity. I don't like the fact that you yeah. told me that they, they didn't do it. And for the first time in my life, it wasn't a fight. It wasn't an argument. It wasn't a bloodbath. Everybody was just repented and, oh, I'm sorry. I can't believe. I don't know why. You know, it was a beautiful display of God's heart for us yeah. when we're able to mend and in my ignorance, that's how I responded. Mm -hmm. In my ignorance, I didn't, I didn't understand. That's it, it's a denial exactly. because if you say, if I come to you and say your brother touch me, I'm gonna be in. A lot of people gonna be in denial, right? Whereas some people gonna go right forward and say, oh my God, I can't believe they did. Other people will be in denial, in denial. and so that's a part of life's process. Mm -hmm. But you know, and I and I shared. I said, hey, but for you to say it didn't happen, what gave you that right? To say it didn't happen. You you weren't there, so you don't know what happened. Right. So, you know, and then to be able to just deal with all those issues, to be able to talk. When I was a teenager, I got assaulted by one of my classmates. And I went to court, man. It was embarrassing enough to have to be, you know, mm -hmm. victimized by somebody in my yeah. class. Yeah. And have to go back to school with the same dude. Ooh. But then I went to court, and the judicial system failed me. And the judge told me to my face. He said, if you hadn't skipped school, you wouldn't have got raped. And I, and I said, huh? Mm. From that moment forth, I went through years of anger issues. Yeah. I was just angry because there's another man that told me that you I don't have, I, I don't have any. I, and I have no say. You have I have no, no voice. Mm. And for years, mm. I went through anger issues. I was mad at everything that looked like a man. I didn't even want to deal with men because I was in such pain. I mean, on yeah. top. Really? You're going to say that? Really? If I had this, what does skipping school have to do with being raped? Now, there's a truth to that. If I had been in school, maybe I wouldn't have been raped. But we don't know that. How do we know that? We don't know that. But it takes the focus off of what actually happened. Absolutely. I mean, he literally said, if you had been at school, this wouldn't have happened. I have total proof that I'm going to have to dismiss this case. And so, wow, as a child, a you can imagine, I'm a, I'm a judge, and you literally just said this to me. Wow. How am I supposed to recuperate from that? Mm, mm, mm. How am I supposed to recover from that right. as I'm a child? This is the second time as a kid I've been violated. Mm. Actually, third. So, I'm like sitting there going, what, what do I do from what's here? What's going on? Right. Yeah. Exactly. But literally, as time progressed, and then I became an adult, had a child from a date rape, and you know what I learned? When I, when I got past that, I started seeking out a very in-depth counselor. Not just, a, not just a counselor, but one that I went to, that lady was absolutely epic. I don't think I ever even 
heard of no counselor like this lady. And I can't, her name escapes me to this day. It was almost <laughs> like she was in my life for that season, got me to where I needed right. to be, and she vanished, like literally. Right, but right. This lady was like, let's talk about these roots. Mm. What happened the first time somebody violated you? What happened? And I started to, she started to break it all down into wow. these components. And she said, if you look at this, you'll see that. If you look at this, you'll see that. And she just started breaking it down for me to be able to rebuild. And so she finally got to the place where she said, where is that little girl that wasn't violated? Can you remember her? Mm. And so she, I said, yeah, she was three That's years old. That's powerful. With a microphone, because I started singing at three. Three years old with a microphone. My grandmother was cheering me on. I was singing Rainbow. Guys put the rainbow in my window by Patti LaBelle. My old, old, old <laughs> song. And that was the one memory that I had of being whole, untainted, and yeah. not harmed. She said, you're going to have to build from there. And every time you get to a place where you're in pain or you're a girl wow. and tend to her needs, and you'll be able to be able to get past anything. Wow. That, and when she taught ooh, me that, I am blown away that by that. That that principle. I, yes. I, I have, a, I have yes. somebody that I was um, doing um, a segment with, because I do a discovery segment with people to see if we even are a good fit for each other for life. And I sure. did a discovery segment with this guy. And I said, hey, tell me what, tell me a time in your life where you were happiest. He started describing, big old grin across his face. And the energy just transitioned from him looking depressed and dilapidated. Because so I said, in there. go back to the, tell me what was a place in your life where you just felt at most, pe and, and just tell me. He started telling me this story about this little boy. Oh my God, man. And I had on this outfit and that, that I said, see, uh, when you think about that boy, you need to go back and help him. Mm -hmm. If you stay focused on him, you'll be able to get through the rest of this. Mm -hmm. Just do what you would do for that little yeah. boy to keep that little boy with joy. Keep that little boy with peace. Keep that little boy happy. Yeah. If you keep him happy and stop trying to deal with this adult crap, then you'll be fine. Yeah. We're so inundated with adult stuff. With adult stuff. With, I see somebody yes. on social media. They got this and that. What they got to do with you? Mm. What they got? You don't know how they acquired it. You have no idea what they... Ma'am, that's dead, baby. Ask him is the car free and clear. Mm. He got a brand new car, but he's paying somebody for it. That's, that, that's not but an that's asset. But that's so powerful because, again, I've, I've done that myself. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've gone back to look at my life. That's right. And that was, that was after, actually, when I was going through my divorce. Yeah. And yeah. I saw a therapist when right. I was going through my divorce. And I tried to get more sessions with her. She told me to get out. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Go but get on with like, your life. And I was like, I'm not ready. I was just like, yeah, you're ready. You're ready. And it was more in the in the forefront of my mind, right, right. my daughter and the things that, right. well, some of the things, I didn't know these things mm -hmm. when I was raising my son, right? Uh -huh. There's 16 years difference between them, but as my daughter was growing up, mm -hmm. it helped me to see more of really being more conscious of what I really do right. really Absolutely. is impacting her for real. And that's funny And it's going to carry You're into right. her You're adult. right. You're right, nice. because I look at what I did with my 19-year-old, now I have a 16-year-old, and my 16-year-old, she is the kind of person that she doesn't accept it. She just says, hey, Ma, I need you to do this. Like, if she, she will, she's very, very vocal, and she says, and she has a great sense of her, of her self-worth, her self-value, mm -hmm. and she'll tell me with a quickness, hey, I need to have time with you, period, and I'll shut everything down. And so, but my other daughter wasn't vocal like that. She was very bashful, very quiet. I never knew what she was really thinking or how she was really feeling. But my youngest daughter, it gives me, like you said, that opportunity to make atonement. Yeah. To really make atonement. Even my oldest daughter now, you know, she moved to Florida last year and I finally got a chance to see her this past weekend. And um, just for her to run into my arms, it just did something for me. Aww. You know, just for her to just run into my arms and I was like, and I didn't know how I was going to respond. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want to mess my lashes up, so I got to figure out how to hold my eyes and bat my eyes just in case, you know. And so she just literally ran into my arms, and I was like, now that's priceless, you know. Yeah. And she was like, um, I miss you, lady. I said, I miss you too, ma'am. You know, and, and just to be able to have that positive yes. transfer of energy where there was no dissension, no anger, no frustration, yeah. no, you did this and you did that and why you did this and why you did that. A lot of times you'll never know the why. 
You have to resolve in yourself. You have to. The you Lord gotta, will give you, gotta you resolve God yourself. will give you closure. It will. Tell people that will. all the time. But you have to want closure. Because oh, yeah, some people do. are attached to their victimization. To the, to the, they, exactly. they like being a victim. So they're attached mm-hmm. to that. And until you They'll get tell detached, you every time you talk to them. Yeah. Until you, until you choose to detach and become victorious and an overcomer, then you're going to always find your same, always that same victim. space or the same always. relationship or the same, yeah, situation, same, the same spirit, different person. Yes. You're going to find yourself in this vicious cycle yes. because yes, mm. you were the student and you failed the test. <laughs> now, Basically. how many times you choose to fail is on exactly. you. Exactly. Yes. the test. Yes. Nobody wants to test. Look, oh in school, it's like, you know, when I have to take tests, I'm not taking a test twice. When I got my license um, to do life insurance, auto, fire, all those type of insurances, I failed the test the first time, right? Didn't take it serious because I'm normally an excellent test taker. But you know what I learned in that moment? I'm not going to keep paying to take this test. That's natural and spiritual. I'm not gonna. Keep, you have to make a payment. Yeah, you do. When you fail those tests. Yeah, you do. I said I'm not paying this money. No more. I'm not gonna do this. Yeah, yes, I'm not yes. doing. This. I will not take this test more than. I told them it was on Christmas Day. Well, what we do for Christmas? I said nothing. Jesus died, honey. He rose and was, he he came back again. He, he he alive today. We ain't doing nothing. So y'all gonna have to deal with it this year. Last year during Christmas, I was studying for that test. I had the test the day after Christmas. I said I refuse. To go in here after I didn't pay these people money twice, I'm not gonna sit here and keep yeah. failing these tests and have to keep making these payments. Right. That's how we have to look at life. Right. You think I was gonna go in there twice? I went in there and the guy said, "Hey, you ready to take the test?" I said, "Go and pat me down because they pat you down because you know this is state licensing." Yeah. So nothing. You can't wear anything to take those exams. Mm-hmm. So I said, "Go and pat me down because I gotta go in here and knock this out real quick." He said, "Well, how long do you think it's gonna take you?" I said, "Half of the time. That's a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it in half the time." I literally went in there, uh huh. Keywords, yeah. Dot, dot, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know the answer, uh huh, uh huh. Mm-hmm. Came out literally a hundred percent on that state test. The mm-hmm. guy said, he told me, you know what? You can write my insurance any day. I said, you're so right. You're so right. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> he was like, you were serious. That's I said, awesome. I had determined you, yeah. that I was not you had a made up mind. To your decision, yeah, you can't divorce your decision. That's right. You gotta stay married to what you decided to do, hone in on it, and do it. And like Nike just, oh, you know what? Um, I don't know if you need to be doing that. Mm-hmm. That ain't your business. That ain't your business. See, I don't, I don't, I don't tell people about the vision. I, I let mm-hmm. them see it after it's mm-hmm. come to pass. I learned the hard way yeah. about premature. You know, sure. it's all, absolutely, yeah, 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 absolutely. premature. Absolutely. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Because mm-hmm. I had somebody literally to steal my idea off of social media. And I said, you know what? I can't get mad at them. I shouldn't have put it out there. Yeah. I didn't copyright it. That was my fault. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I forgive them and I forgive me. Let me go on, on to the Let next thing. Let me go on to the next thing. That was my because, fault. Because, listen, he is replete. <laughs> Thank you. Right. I He's got a so new vision full. the next day. I was so mad. No I running said, out. it was a lesson. It was, it was a, lesson. a lesson. It was a lesson. It was a lesson. Life, life is a, lessons and blessings. Lessons and blessings. Mm-hmm. Lessons and blessings. And it everything is. is just an experience. We, we get it so is. attached to every event. Like, oh my God. No, it's an experience. Whether it's a good one or a bad one, it's how you think about it. I say we're in school. Life, life is nothing but a big class test. test. It's nothing but a big class test. You have to pass the test. Exactly. But it's an exactly. open book test. It is an open book test. We always got the answer. We always, we always got, got the answer. answer. We always got the answer. Always got the answer. Always. 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 I tell you, I just, uh, I try to say, I don't, I don't like, I don't have problems. I have puzzles. There you um, go. Puzzles True. are meant to be True. solved. True. Right? True. And if you There's have a problem, an answer. you need to understand how to solve it. That's right. Because people, you know, it's funny because I had a problem. I went to um, the owner of the agency that I represent for the agency that I'm at. Okay. And it's funny because this other lady said, oh, this is how you have to deal with that. I said, you show right. I went and went back and redid all the blocks. And I said, oh, here's the resolve. I'm not coming mm-hmm. to you with a problem. I'm going to come with you. To, I'm right. going to you just with a problem. Yeah. I'm going to come to you as to how we need to resolve yeah. it. People need problem solvers. They don't problem need to solvers. have and other you know, stuff. I'll, I'll find, what time is oh, so it's? The time older girl. I get, uh-huh. the less mm-hmm. patience mm-hmm. I have to really work with my my patience. Right. You have to keep your guard down. You're less, charming and yeah, patience, girl. I have, I have less patience for people who constantly come to me. What's, okay, let's, solution. Right. Because right. if you're coming right. to me with a situation, I'm already thinking. Right. Right? right. I'm like, okay, look, right. I said, so how can I understand it better Absolutely. so that I can help them? Absolutely. You know, well, I'm, you know, I'm constantly thinking like that. So when you come to me with that, mm-hmm. I just, 
you know, I kind of, it's to like just drains the blood out of my face. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And I just your, have, your face, I'll be like, oh, face ain't ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. And so, you get know, your face, but your I, I, I got to get my face. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Got on the show, my it. face is a hot mess on the hot seat. <laughs> Can we highlight about the anthology? We yes. got probably like a. Come on. Okay. Come on. Yes. So and I then got, let the people know how to connect with you. Absolutely. We have at the very end of the writing phase, literally at the very end um, and so it's super exciting I have some incredible incredible leaders that are writing with me I have the all all encompass A.B. Roberts um, I also have Victoria Dubois Jones I have Tonil Jackson Pastor Jason Hendrickson I also have um, Robert Malloy on board with us I also have Gracia Rich who is also on with us as the chief editor kudos to Gracia so and I also have Jason Thibodeau who is an actor here locally that has been my friend for 11 years now and so Jason is on board with us he's doing a chapter in the book as well so this is my first anthology so super excited about that and I have a romance novel that I'm in completion oh, of that'll be coming out too but good. both babies can't be born at the same time you know okay. both babies can't come out of it's not twin ministries it's, it's not individual twin births <laughs> it's individual births so the race of the ring is our focus right now okay. seven seasons of successful courtship is yes. going to be epic um, we had a meeting not long ago and it was just exciting to hear everybody's heart about the project. Um, super, super I love excited. That super courtship. excited. Yep. That's Come what on, we're missing. Bring it back. That's what we're missing. We yes, truly are. Bring we're it truly back. Missing Text them back and forth. Yeah, that's, that's not a real courtship. relationship. Yeah, that's not courtship. Courtship is past <laughs> relationship. That's 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 those moments before you cross over into a healthy, viable marriage. So it'll be a nice little handbook that they can re- refer back to after they're married. And so the things that are in it won't just have to do with the pre marriage, but after sure, the marriage. You absolutely. just refer back to it for the seven C. So it's pretty and it's the letter C, seven C. Seven C. Yeah, so it's gonna be pretty awesome. It's gonna okay. be pretty awesome. Yeah. Well how yeah. can they connect she's listen, we uh February, February, my, I mean, the transforming lifestyle. Nice. So I have uh, individuals nice. I'm booking already for that. Nice. Uh, February, since everyone wants to talk about love, love, right, love, right, it's right. not all about hearts and Valentine's true, Day, right? True, because true. really, you can't talk about love until you talk about Jesus. There I'm you just going to put it there out you there. Go. But in there any event, we're going to have different facets of it. I definitely awesome. want to pick a time that. for okay. you to come Let back. Me know. Let me know. Uh, you can pr- uh, Let me know. You talk about because your book will be It'll out, be out, out by month, then. Yeah, right? The book will be out by then. And we'll be able to do It's going to be called that month's theme is What's Love Got to Do with It? Because really, what's love got to do with it? Girl, it. That's it, a is mouthful. it is a mouthful. It's a mm-hmm. mouthful, so for sure. But you guys can catch me on social media. I'm under pcoffeebrown.info, pcoffeebrown.org, and right here on the Book of Faces. Um, I have I'm almost capped out of friends ministries, but I'm I'm about to you know just get rid of some people <laughs> that, that you know that's not tied to the church. Amen. Right. Tied so to we're the gonna church. be getting a, you know a few ministry workers <laughs> off the platform because they don't want to be in the church. So it's okay. Y'all can leave. It's okay. No problem. So, and I'm also on YouTube on the peacoffeebrown.info, and that's K-O-F-F-E, Brown. All of the shows that we had from last season are on my YouTube channel, so that's exciting. Awesome. I find Look, I finally set my administrator self down and did the doggone thing. I said, Lord, if you don't sit know. down somewhere, know. you know, and for all my speaking engagements and anything professional, you can look at me on LinkedIn. My media kit is on LinkedIn. For anybody that wants to book a speaking engagement or want me to connect with you, you want life coaching, whatever you're looking for, you can check out my LinkedIn professional profile for that to be able to participate me in, to, with me in that regard. So, yeah. Yes. And then I have coffee going. It's just a place to get resources, valuable information, and things like that under Coffee's Corner. So it's it's hot. It's cool. It's hot. You know, it's hot. So yeah, it's hot. It's, it's hot. hot. It's, it's cool. Hot. It's, it's cool. Hot. Yeah, it's hot. It's cool. All righty. Well, this has been awesome. Awesome. Girl, I'm looking Kavanaugh. forward to connecting with you. Absolutely. Uh, we gonna do some after things. We, we, gonna, gonna, do we, we already talked about. We, we gonna, gonna do, do some, some things. Some things right? We gonna get some things done. Get some things done. Absolutely. Amen. And it's just, uh, I'm just so excited because again, um, this podcast is just really giving me. I'm kind of a little nosy. I don't ever start. Stuff. You know, it's I'll like my my colleague says to me. You know, somebody moved out of the building. I said, oh, honey, they went over there. She said, you know everything, though. Just said, honey, I ask questions. Yeah, ask questions. You got to ask the right questions. You got to ask questions. The and right, I love qu- talking the to right people. questions. The right questions. Not just the right. questions, but the right questions. And I love talking to people. So this gives me, this podcast has really given me a great platform awesome. to be able to 
because I love connecting with people. Absolutely. I love supporting. Absolutely. You know, and I'm just so excited about it. I just don't really know what to do with myself. Well, I'm so excited coming in today. I right. know. Okay. I know. Okay. This uh, that will that will watch it. Absolutely. Uh, you can connect. a man. Coach Comfy has given you all of her information. Feel free to connect with her. Um, feel free to connect with me, as Coach, as well. Um, and you know, I just love Jesus. I'm just gonna tell you right now, and I believe in empowering people. Listen, you are the best that you Absolutely. that God has created. There's Absolutely. only one you. Right. Right? right, you are an original. Absolutely, you are a masterpiece. Right, and there's no one that can do you better than you. Absolutely, right. Absolutely. So be about doing what you desire, what God has had has for Indeed. you to do. Indeed, be about it. What you gonna do? Be about it. Be then. about it. And right, don't talk about it. Uh, don't about talk it. about it. Just be about it. Right. All right? Right. right. See you next time. Bye bye. bye.